Fish oil beats krill oil every time when you compare krill oil to fish oil when oil is the metric of comparison. And that is where the deception, and it's an innocent deception, but the deception occurs. So comparing fish oil, you can see salmon who've uh, finished their trip, they've turned their color. So the fish oil, uh, the omega-3s from fish oil versus krill oil uh, are actually similar, but that is not what krill oil actually is. Comparing the two is like comparing apples in the haircut version on the left side to oranges that we eat on the right side. And this reason why is because krill oil is actually a carotenoid supplement. Carotenoids, the most famous one is beta carotene. There are many others. Uh, and the carotenoid in krill is called astaxanthin. And so we'll talk about that in a little bit. But here is a picture of a little krill. Uh, this came from Nutrition Reviews. They go through the details of it. And supposedly, by looking at all this, one might be led to believe that somehow, <laughs> I don't know how they come up with this, but that krill oil is a better oil than fish oil. And the reason why, perhaps, is because you have a paper like this, which is legit, demonstrating that krill oil has an inflammatory reduction ability. And so the misinterpretation is that the oil, as in omega-3s, did it. And that is simply not how krill oil, in the standard amount recommended by manufacturers, gets its beneficial effects. So in this study, you can see, you can see the title, A Randomized Clinical Trial to, to Determine the Efficacy of the Manufacturer's Recommended Doses of Omega-3 Fatty Acids. Because remember, when you're, when you're talking about oil, the metric for measurement is comparing the oil and comparing the oil omega-3 changes in blood after consuming the supplement. So here's what they did. They compared a concentrated triglyceride fish oil. Notice the amount of EPA DHA, 650 EPA, 450 DHA. They compared it to an ethyl ester fish oil, 750 EPA, 228 uh, DHA, and then a triglyceride salmon oil, which was not concentrated. The other two were concentrated. This is why there is less EPA and less DHA. And the final is your phospholipid krill oil, which contains 150 milligrams EPA, 90 milligrams DHA. So if you were to look at this, you should conclude that without question, if you take these doses, the increased omega-3s uh, in body circulation based upon a blood test, you would see that you would have a much greater increase of EPA and DHA by taking the concentrated triglyceride fish oil because there's just more of the omega-3s. And the losers would be the triglyceride salmon and the, triglycer and, and the phospholipid krill oil. And what do we find out? Exactly that. When at the prescribed dosages, the statistical ranking of four products in terms of increase in the whole blood omega-3 fatty acid levels was first place concentrated triglyceride, next place ethyl ester also concentrated, then triglyceride salmon oil, and then finally in last place, as it will always be in last place when taken at that dosage, is krill oil. And so you can see the whole blood EPA percentage increase in subjects consuming the concentrated Triglyceride fish oil was more than four times of krill and salmon oil. Not really much of a difference between the ethyl ester. So risk reduction for several elements of cardiovascular disease achieves to a greater extent by which supplement? Concentrated triglyceride fish oil because it has the most EPA DHA. It's not that complicated. And number four, look what we're told, krill oil and the unconcentrated triglyceride oil from salmon were relatively unsuccessful in this aspect as one would expect based upon the dosages. So here's where the trickery, and this, I, say, I say trickery only because people buy into 
just the word krill is better than fish oil. I don't think it's uh, on purpose or anything. It's just, it's just a misunderstanding of the studies. So here's an example of a new study that came out in January of 2017 in the journal Ophthalmology looking at uh, two forms of omega-3 supplements for treating dry eye disease. So you've probably seen commercials for that. Turns out that dry eye syndrome is an inflammatory condition, as are most conditions, as outlined on the, the dflame.com website and in the dflame diet book. So here's what they did. Patients or participants received one of three interventions for 90 days, so three months, with monthly study visits. They either took placebo, the, and that was olive oil at 1,500 milligrams per day, or they took krill oil, which delivered 945 milligrams of EPA and 515 milligrams DHA versus fish oil, basically the same amounts. So you'll see how this is not really a reasonable approach to take if you're the average person just wanting to take an omega-3 supplement. This is very different. You'll see why. So a moderate daily dose of both forms, and remember they had the essentially, from a practical perspective, the exact same amount of EPA and DHA. So a moderate daily dose of both forms of omega-3s reduced tear osmolarity and increased tear stability in people with dry eye disease. Omega-3s in a predominantly phospholipid krill oil form may confer additional benefits, therapeutic benefits, compared to the fish. And that seems like, whoa, that's not what you said before. These are totally different studies. And the reason why is because look at the dosages. The dosing is the key. And the reason why there is additional benefit from krill oil is because krill oil contains astaxanthin, which is a marine carotenoid not found, uh, at least any substantial degree, on land. So it is found uniquely concentrated in krill. And this is what it looks like. This is astaxanthin, there it is. And when they're talking about the, the krill oil in this particular paper, they're comparing the anti-inflammatory, which would be the omega-3 EPA DHA stuff, which would be consistent with fish oil and krill oil, but then we have the antioxidant agent, uh, astaxanthin, found in krill. So krill oil should be viewed as not an oil supplement. Your, your fish oil contains virtually no uh, carotenoids. None as far as I know. There might be some, but none as far as I know. So here's a paper where they looked at the incorporation of EPA and DHA. Remember, this is the metric, the incorporation of EPA and DHA into your blood circulating phospholipids in response to different omega-3 supplements. One would be, there are two fish oil, they compare triglyceride and ethyl ester versus krill oil. Now look at what we have here. What we have here is very important. Here is what they did. You can see this is the ethyl ester portion, triglycerides were down here, to, to, uh, not enough room to, to, show, to show them all. So here's what we can say, total EPA DHA, taking four capsules of fish oil in this particular fish oil brand, 1,600 milligrams of EPA DHA, one krill oil, look what they took, 14 capsules, 14 capsules of krill oil compared to four capsules of fish oil. So very different. It took 14 capsules of krill to get the equivalent EPA DHA of four capsules of fish oil. So you cannot simply just take two little pills of krill and get the same omega-3 DHA benefits. Look what we're told also. Do the high standard deviation value, which, which means in the three groups absorption varied there were no significant differences for DHA and some of EPA DHA levels between the three treatments. So from the metric of EPA DHA, krill is not the way to go. It is too expensive. It is too expensive. It is, in fact, at that high dose, it becomes a astaxanthin supplement. Here are now foods astaxanthin and now foods Neptune krill. So if we look here, we can see on the left side a 
Single serving, which is the standard recommendation per day of astaxanthin, is four milligrams. Over here, you can see this is a 60, uh, uh, a 60 count bottle of krill oil, and the, your, the recommendation per day is just two soft gels. And the two soft gels give you what one of the pills from the previous study would tell us. So if we were to uh, get the equivalent amount of EPA DHA as we saw in the previous study, we would have to multiply two by seven to get 14 pills. And 14 pills would lead us to again multiply down below the astaxanthin by seven by taking 14 of these soft gels per day. We would get 8.75 milligrams of astaxanthin, which is more than double the recommended dose if you just take the single astaxanthin supplement by itself. Now, if you look again here, you see 60 soft gels. You would polish off this bottle in uh, less than uh, a, a five-day supply. You have just about a four and a what, four and a, a third, so a four and a third day supply at 60 soft gels. So consider how expensive this is. So when we compare krill to fish oil. We have to remember that krill oil should be viewed as a carotenoid supplement. It is not the same as fish oil. On a, on a cost basis, there is no comparison. Fish oil crushes krill oil.